Oops. Let me turn my heat down. It's cooking in here now. Good. And we'll go ahead and get started. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. We want to thank you for attending today's NLP webinar, where we will take a look at the business case for the leverage of strategic procurement thinking. All attendees will be in listen-only mode for the duration of this presentation. If you have any questions, please, po please pose in the question box and I will relay them to the presenter during the webinar as time allows. Now I'm pleased to introduce you today's presenters, Mr. Ron Crabtree and Mr. David Millington. David Millington is the Director of Education here at Next Level Purchasing. He is a certified strategic planning professional he brings over 18 years experience in the strategy execution, product service development, organizational and supply chain excellence arenas. He is a certified supply chain professional, certified new product development professional, certified strategic planning professional, and a certified Lean Six Sigma black belt. He holds a master's degree in quality systems management from the National Graduate School of Quality Management. David brings hands-on experience at the VP, director, and a manager's level, guiding and facilitating the development of strategic and tactical solutions to intricate organizational product and service challenges. Ron Crabtree is CEO of MetaOp Inc. and MetaExpert. He has over 30 years experience in organizational and business innovation and transformation, and along the way, more than 20 years in procurement and supply chain. He is an internationally recognized expert in cutting edge business process improvement methodologies. Ron is a master Lean Six Sigma black belt, having helped train and certify thousands of Lean Six Sigma and Six Sigma belts and driving hundreds of millions in value for clients. He is the author, co-author of five books on operational excellence. He has served as instructor for Villanova University and the University of San Francisco as a lead subject matter expert in Lean Six Sigma, Six Sigma Green, Black Belt, Masters of Business Analysis, Supply Chain Management, and Lean Supply Chain. Ron has past and current certifications and expertise in numerous industry recognized trainings and is a developer of the top facilitator program for leaders of organizational transformation. David, Ron, thanks for joining us today as we all look forward to this presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. So it's Ron Crabtree here. I'll get us started. Um, you know, here's our agenda and what we're looking to learn today is I'm going to introduce a 10 phased approach to world class sourcing and establishing a long term strategy that actually works the way you intend it to and a little bit of a deep dive into a particular aspect of that that we can cover in some detail in today's webinar. And from there, getting into kind of understanding how do you leverage customer requirements as we develop our strategy and thereby, hopefully, drive a better customer experience. And then at the end of the webinar, we'd like to help you prioritize your learning on this subject matter. So 45 minutes is not enough time to cover a lot of detail here, but we would like to get you off to a good start on your learning journey, as the case may be. But before we jump in, it's always nice to get to know the audience a little bit and kind of how you're oriented around this subject matter. And we'd like to ask you to self-rate yourself for the polling question. And so which of these five things kind of best describes your personal expertise when it comes to developing procurement strategy? How would you rate yourself? If you could quickly use the polling tool and just plug a value here, one being novice, five being the guru that should be teaching the webinar or somewhere in between. And let's just check in to see where our audience is and their current knowledge about this topic.
I've got a red a red a red warning here saying host and panelists cannot vote. I see. Of course we don't. <laughs> <laughs> of course we don't. All right. I think we're gonna go ahead and end the polling now and display the results. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So, uh, hey, that's pretty interesting. So we have about almost 50% of everybody that voted saying, I'm kind of in the middle here. I've been partly trained. I have some experience, but uh, I can certainly learn more. We have a couple of folks consider themselves to be advanced. So that's good to know. And it'd be interesting to get some feedback as to whether any new wrinkles are encountered for the brain of folks who are more advanced. And those who are novice, there's no shame in that. Uh, but this is a great place to get started on your learning journey. So if, even though you may be novice, there's no shame in that. And this is an opportunity to begin moving your knowledge up the field. So with that, we can move on to the next slide. Go ahead and close out the poll. All right, awesome. So here's the thing about developing strategy. You know, there's, there's lots of things to think about, but these first thing, uh, three here around cost, risk, and analysis, those tend to be pretty short interval. And most organizations, you know, come to that on some, some some frequency of looking at what they should be doing about these things. That's pretty normal to give that a lot of thought. What, what I don't see a lot of, and you don't hear a lot about, is really looking at this fourth bullet around examining the suppliers, the organization, to determine how to foster better integration and what's called value creation. And that's really more of a longer term kind of thing. It's the source of the biggest possible benefits is right there at bullet number four, but it also takes a lot longer to convert on that to kind of come up with and define, you know, what are the game changers that will actually move the needle in a big way for my organization and make us really, really effective. And of course, what comes out of that is, you know, how do we select and reward suppliers in the future that align with our value creation objectives? And then inside of that, how can we simplify, streamline, and make life better for everybody, all of our stakeholders, and deliver a better customer experience on the back end? So with that, I'm going to turn it over to David here for a little bit, and we're going to get into the 10-phased approach. So as a response to um, a lot of what um, Ron mentioned in terms of um, the procurement function mandate and the supply chain mandate, uh, Next Level Purchasing had designed this 10-phase approach to world-class sourcing. And... Uh, World-class sourcing or sourcing in particular is one of the critical components of effective uh, supply chain processes. And it's very important that we're able to look at our organization, look internally and externally and understand the factors that would impact the ultimate customer experience or the, or the experience of our external customers. And the key underpinning here in this model is, of course, really understanding the business requirements. What are those strategic requirements, strategic objectives, and, and, and ensuring that they're firmly aligned to the customer requirements. This uh, model is underpinned as well by best practices and identifying what are the best practices that will help us in attaining that value creation objective. And of course, how could we look at our systems internally and externally and continuously improve the alignment of the procurement function and, 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 and the sourcing function, which again is a critical component of, of which we'll be held accountable in terms of how well we are executing our mandate. So the key here, uh, underpinning is, is to understand and, and to be able to continuously improve and align the sourcing process to the strategic objectives and of course customer requirements. So this uh, approach has 41 sub processes or sub phases and uh, we would um, at the end of this webinar provide you with the slide so you could look in depth and, and, and internalize those 41 phases. Um, next slide. So this is, uh, these are the, the first four components of an effective sourcing strategy. And again, the phase one, one of the, the key takeaways here is to, to really understand what are the, 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 the key customer requirements that exist and to be able to prioritize them 
and to align our workflows as procurement professionals, to align our sourcing process and the entire procurement function to realize those requirements and those objectives. And when we say customers, it's important that, that, that we, we do not uh, leave out our internal customers and then we, 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 we are clearly able to define what their requirements are, prioritize those requirements and ensure that we, we're able to, to live up to those expectations. And if that's done, it will be a lot easier to realize and to enable all of the other functions and departments in our organization to realize the external customer requirements, which essentially is, is why a business exists. So uh, much of the, the if, if you were to, to collaborate with many procurement and sourcing professionals, you know, they, they would go into matters of, you know, preparing um, the, the, the bids and evaluating proposals and, and RFQs and RFPs, et cetera. And um, very little is spoken about, you know, business al analysis, you know, really understanding the, the, the internal processes and understanding and um, analyzing our business in terms of, of its current state and its ability to realize and execute on those uh, requirements. So it's very important that uh, we're able to understand our current state and to perform significant degrees of, of business analysis. And of course, understanding the, the um, requirements and of course, executing an effective market survey and really understanding the dynamics of the market. Um, next slide. So one of the key tools that will, will give us a, a um, tremendously uh, profound context in, in, in how to, to align uh, our sourcing activities to the strategic objectives of, of our organization is what we call environmental scanning. And the, the key takeaway here is to understand the context and the environment in which our sourcing process and our procurement function has to operate in order to, to realize the organizational goals. And good procurement strategies are an effective response to environmental factors. And, and these, these factors are socio-demographic trends, uh, com, uh, competitive trends, what are our competitors, competitors up to and how well are their procurement function, functions serving them in realizing those objectives. And of course, to understand the, the, the economic and ecological factors that impact our supply chains. And of course, you know, in, 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 in lately the political uh, dynamics and how those come into play and how those affect and how those impact uh, sourcing and the procurement function and, and then the supply chain in particular. And as we see with, with uh, the rise of artificial intelligence, blockchain, um, um, the internet of things, you know, how technology uh, would disrupt our supply chains and how our competitors and how how us as, adults, as procurement professionals, how we would pivot and protect and enable our organizations to leverage and leverage and partake in uh, effective technologies to to realize competitive advantage. And of course, the last I mentioned there, we see really understanding the, the customer trends and, and, and the shifts. And the, the key takeaway here is to understand what is currently trending. What are the trends and to understand them and to understand how those trends would impact our organizations. Would it be a, 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 some, a positive impact or a negative impact? And of course, to understand how our organizations are positioned to either capitalize on positive trends or to mitigate um, negative um, shifts in, in these trends. And from here, uh, many of um, experts in, in strategy and procurement strategy recommend that, that the SWOT analysis could, could, this could be the start point of the SWOT analysis. So many organizations, we go into SWOT analysis without doing an environmental scan. We're not aware of the processes that are involved in the environmental scan. And the key takeaway here is to understand trends and the impact of those trends and to have strategies to, again, to mitigate negative trends or to capitalize on positive trends. Uh, next slide, please. 
So uh, one of the, 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 the critical tools to enable us to, 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 to think strategically, and I always say that uh, thinking strategically is a prerequisite to, 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 to any type of uh, strategic plan, whether it's a prep the corporate level st strategy or the procurement function strategy. To be able to think uh, strategically, is, it's, it's, it's a profound science and, and, and it's something that, that I would recommend and urge you all to do some extensive research and to, to refine those skill sets. So again, this is a um, customer requirements matrix, but an internal customer requirements matrix. And um, the last webinar, there was some um, profound interest on how to, to leverage and how to, to matrix uh, customer requirements internally and externally. And um, this particular matrix here was, um, was a response to, to a, a real world project that, um, that I was part of. And the whole idea of, of, of uh, internal customer requirements matrix is to prioritize the most important elements that would enable our internal customers to succeed at what they do. So in this case, this was um, a soup manufacturer and the internal uh, customer was the filling process. And the, the supplier to that process was of course um, um, the, the soup um, production. So you produce the soup, it's cooked, and then the next step, um, the next process would be to fill on the soup into the, 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 the specified um, containers. So in this case, again, the, the fill process was the, the, the customer. So one of the things that I did was that we, we, we sat down and we spoke to the, the, the leaders of the fill process and of course the plant manager, and they were asked, what are the most important uh, requirements? What do they need from the soup production, from the soup production department? to be able to fulfill their mandates. And it was timeliness, effective communication, as you can see on the screen, on um, the quality of product, agility and flexibility, and of course, the correct product. And then they were asked, um, if you look um, on, on, on this side, uh, the, the significance of importance on a scale of one to five. And of course, all of these, um, just happened that, that all of these requirements were, were critically important. And we, we identified there were about 28 requirements, but um, this uh, five were the most critical um, requirements, meaning that if there's failure to deliver on these requirements, it, it, it would be considered as a, as a serious, um, to call it, uh, um, deficiency. Customer, internal customer dissatisfaction. And of course, the current performance would be the next um, column in, um, in, in line. And we saw that um, in turnaround time, right, this score, there was a dismal score and the gap was uh, four. And then, um, so that means that turnaround time is the most important requirement to in, in, for this internal customer, right? So, um, and then the accuracy was um, the least because there was the least gap. So in terms of focusing internal resources um, and to tie this into the procurement function, I'm sure you, you, you could translate how this relates to, to procurement processes, to other processes, and um, to matrix it this way. So it's a very, very important tool in terms of prioritizing the needs and requirements of the internal customers. And of course, we recommend that you do a survey, maybe a quarterly survey to, to ask uh, the internal customers, how well are we doing on these, um, the, the, the identified most critical uh, requirements and get that survey and get that feedback and um, figure out and deploy ways on how we could improve on, on, on our delivery. Uh, next slide. Okay, so I'm going to pick it up here for a couple of minutes. And I just want to emphasize uh, for the audience that there's 10 phases to this whole process. And what David and I chose to do for this webinar is do a bit of a deep dive in just the very first step, right? It was getting clear about customer requirements and really beginning with the end in mind in terms of what our external and internal customers are looking for. So we're diving into some significant detail here and we're going to build this out before we get back to you know, the general topic on today's webinar. So here we've got 
if you will, leveraging that internal customer requirements matrix, remembering that the voice of the customer, the voice of the market is really the key inputs that we need to feed to the organization. And then we have to listen to our internal customers as well. There is a basic process for this, right? You can follow that from top to bottom and it's pretty much a straightforward process. But then there's lots of different kinds of benefits that come into play. And I wanted to zero in a little bit here on benefit number two as being highly dependent on alignment, cross-functional alignment within your organization. And if we fail to engage and, and involve them in that conversation and we fail to meet their needs, A, we're not gonna get cooperation, and then B, we're gonna have unhappy internal customers because we're not listening to their voice and properly integrating it into the process as we go forward. So this, uh, this type of an approach is, is very healthy and it creates a basis for very good dialogue and getting really clear about what good looks like um, the back end of our strategy. So as you continue on, we have the external customer requirements matrix, and this is uh, very important. Uh, you know, this is very similar to the one David showed us here a few minutes ago, where you've got your current customer importance, you can do your benchmark, determine your gap and come up with priorities. Well, what's important here as you move forward, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in and talk about quality function deployment here in a couple of minutes, but what's really important is recognize that this exercise produces very valuable inputs to the process as you just drill down, down, down to what to really focus on is taking a look at what are the characteristics the customer cares about. It could be quality, it could be other things. Speed, like here's timeliness, right? Consider it a quality characteristic from, from David's example. We get clear as what that means in the voice of the customer or the voice of the internal, uh, external customer what it is we're gonna measure, what's the correct metric or measurement method, and then what's the target value that we're working for, whether we're achieving it or not. Then we can move on to this next piece here. And as we're leveraging the voice of customer and that customer requirements matrix, who again, we follow a process and that's defined over here on the left-hand side. But when we think about the benefits, you know, I want to zero in on benefits five through eight, right? So think about benefit number six, providing guidance around how to design what? Hmm. Internal processes and the departments and how we're going to align those up so that we can achieve the objectives with respect to external customer requirements. It's best we align our internal processes to deliver the best possible experience and performance that our customers are looking for. And then in turn takes us to point number eight here, right? Providing that input and the data points for how, what's our criterion going to be? You know, the suppliers uh, today and the suppliers we're developing, or we need to take current suppliers and move them toward it, is, you know, what's the criterion that we're gonna hold them accountable to moving forward to allow us to achieve the lofty goal of the external customer requirements linked to the internal customer requirements, getting these synced up so that we can be spot on in that future performance. So all of this provides inputs into advanced tools like quality function deployment. And this is a pretty busy page, so I'm gonna ask you to be patient as we kind of walk out all the different key pieces here. First of all, to properly do quality function deployment or QFD, it, it always presumes that you actually know what the customer wants. And then we work down through what are the, what's the criterion? What were the things that the customer actually cared about? We've moved through and understood the importance of that with the prior matrices so we can bring that value forward and then use that to begin to drill in on the spec with specificity where we're going to focus scarce resources. So what you do here is you've got, here's what the customer cares about. And then these are our processes or the methods we use to deliver that to the customer. And then there's correlation between these methods or features, if you will, of our product or service and how they map up to what the customer actually cares about. And you can put values to these. The other thing that's kind of neat about this is you can begin to compare yourself against your competitors. You can do some benchmarking, if you will, or getting feedback from their customers on each of these attributes of performance, you know, what they care about against the actual process and begin to benchmark that, give it different values as you work down through here. This in turn leads you down to really understanding our internal processes and then how we're going to line up our company, think about our various competitors and determine how do we arrive to agreement on the priorities? You know, this is a very useful way 
with some scientific thought to it to identify what are the most important things to focus on, how are we going to measure those, and what's the target that we're working to. This is not a game we do in, the, in, our, in our procurement shop, you know, as procurement professionals. We don't go off in a corner and just do this ourselves. This is, you've got to get people involved here. You need marketing and sales, your engineering functions, people to develop product service for the future, people listening to the customers, and then the actual operations folks who deliver the value. This can't be done in a vacuum. This has to be everybody together. Let's make sure we agree with where the data came from, agree on what we believe these things to be most important, and then use that to craft and develop the go forward in terms of making things happen. So with that, I'm gonna take a breath and pass it back to David and finish up this discussion around leveraging quality function deployment. You're muted, David. One of the, you could hear me now? Yes. Yes, so one of the, the, the um, very important um, takeaways from, um, from what Ron was mentioning is that we have to understand that the better we, the better we are as procurement professionals in understanding the critical components of, of what customers see or the external customer and internal customers see as important, we have to understand that that will have profound impact on how we execute our uh, sourcing function, our procurement function, how we select our suppliers, because we have to we have to ensure that we are able to um, select suppliers that are able to deliver on those requirements. Right, so we laser focus the the energies and the the, the assets and the resources of our supply base to deliver on those requirements. Those requirements, in particular. Uh, the, the, the criterion for supplier selection and supplier performance, right? So as we, we, we go through effective supplier performance and development, uh, there's some gaps. We ensure that, that, that the, supply, the suppliers are able to, to perform effectively and close those gaps to meet those requirements. If we do that, then we will have integration and synergy across supply chain processes. And one of the, the, the key um, things that I would like us to understand and to be aware of is um, design for X. X meaning all of the critical or the, the, the essential factors or variables in our supply chain that are, and of course, the ones that are most important to our customers internally, internally and externally, and ensuring that, that our products are designed in a way that um, there are many ways um, to design products. Um, design for cost, design for cost, design for ease of use, ease of repair, and of course, design for ease of sourcing, very important, ease of manufacture, uh, ease of shipping, right? Ease of, of picking and packing and, and reliability. Uh, if our products are designed in a way that they're not reliable, of course, this would impact the entire uh, customer experience. It impact it would impact the brand, and of course, uh, anytime you have gaps or, or, or poor performance and reliability and quality, they would impact the the the, the, the procurement activity in terms of, of of spend. You know, there's no way you would spend less if the, the end products are not reliable. Uh, if the, we have to think in terms of the total cost of ownership and the total cost to serve. So I'm um, designing for, um, and of course, integrating the suppliers in those, uh, what they call um, decisions, and of course, the end user, the customer, and the, the, the internal elements of the organization to, to really understand these um, design parameters. And I would like us to, to ponder and reflect and look at our product line and see um, just using the many parameters that that uh, that would um, design for X will fall under. But these are some that we laid out for you. And then and, and look, look at our product line and our services and see how well do they conform to these design criteria. So this is these are all elements of of, of being able to to think strategically and to in and to to design our procurement strategies to conform and to realize these uh, elements. Uh, next slide. So here are the, the next four in line of, of the, 
the 10, 10 phase approach to world-class sourcing. Of course, many of us, we're familiar with bid preparation and of course, um, uh, proposal requests, et cetera, to contracting and contracting in a way that, that we, we, are, we, we, are, we are focused on um, risk mitigation and ensuring that, that, that our contracts protect the organization from any type of undue exposure um, from uh, supplier poor performance. But uh, it's, it's very important that, that, um, that we understand that, that, that many of us, we look to technology to, to, and, and, and to automate a lot of these processes and we engage uh, technology um, suppliers or software suppliers to, 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 um, to design packages for us. But this 10 phase approach is very important because we have laid out all of the critical component components or the sub phases. So, so I recommend that if you're going to, to procure some type of um, uh, technology or software for sourcing that you benchmark it against um, this 10 phase approach and uh, examine the sub phases and see where the gaps are and you know um, understand whatever trade-offs um, that would be um, that you need to have in your particular environment but I think it's a very very useful tool to see where the gaps are in in um, the technology that you, you have currently that we're using currently or that we may look to procure in the future and of course I would like to to hone in on a couple of things here, um, especially like the last bullet in terms of, of, or the last two bullets in terms of recognizing outstanding supplier performance. I think that that's very important that we recognize our suppliers and we have some sort of a program for that. And it, it's not year and year, you know, well, I give you the business and, and, and we pay you on time and, and, and that's that, but really building that relationship and, um, um, there's a lot of value in, in, in having a program where we uh, recognize uh, outstanding performance because we want to sort of keep that as, as, as part of, of how we operate. And of course, to, to collaborate with all the way downstream to customers, all the way upstream um, to our suppliers and, and look for, for opportunities to improve. So it's all about um, back to the, the, the key underpinnings of the 10 phase uh, approach to world-class sourcing. One of them was continuously improving um, the, not only the, the, the alignment of the procurement function and sourcing to the, the, the corporate objectives, but continuously improving everything in the supply chain and to identify those and to collaborate. All right. Uh, next slide. Okay, we're gonna move on now to a polling question. And here we're going to give the audience a chance to weigh in. So, what, so David's what we did in the is we kind of expanded this very first one around objective, right? And we'd like you to weigh in now, just picking uh, picking which of these are most interesting to you. So, of these ten different things, and these prior slides kind of give you a flavor for what's inside of those. You can pick as many of these ten as you like, but we'd like it, would like you to weigh in. Which of these do you find most interesting or useful going forward? Either interesting from a learning opportunity perspective, or useful from an application perspective in your business. Multiple choice. You know, pick the ones you think are going to be most interesting or useful going forward, and we'd like to get that feedback because we may expand on some of these specific areas in future webinars. So, if you could weigh in on that, please. We'll let Amber monitor it. We've got uh, quite a number of people there. I think once we get past at least 50% uh, quorum, we'll see how we're doing. And then we're going to be taking <laughs> notes. <laughs> I will leave this open for another 10 seconds, so please get your answers in as soon as possible. Okay, there are the results. Very good, excellent, thank you. Let's just scan this for a moment. Uh, I find it interesting, the highest value, David, we got across the board here was current business analysis, was the single highest value, followed by number nine, 
proposal analysis. That's pretty interesting. Yes, it Followed is. by <laughs> number one, objective definition. So those, and then we have uh, bid preparation uh, at 39%. So we had a couple of ties at 39%, one at 43, one at 36. So, so thank you, because it gives a little bit of a signal here from the audience. You know, there's probably some maturity around proposal requests, you know, if there's some maturity there that's less important to us. And maybe on the contracting, not so much, but some of these other areas signal that those areas we probably want to focus on and understand better going forward. So Amber, thank you. you can go ahead and close the poll. All right, well, we've only got about four or five more slides to get through here before we get down to Q&A. And I'm gonna let David take the next couple of slides. And then uh, we'll talk about metrics here in a few minutes. But David, if you could uh, walk this one out for us. Yes. Yeah, so um, as part of um, sort of integrating the, 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 the thought processes here with the 10 phase approach, um, one of the key elements of that 10 phase approach is to, to leverage best practices. And uh, one of the best practices that, that, um, that we recommend is to form a commodity and a commodity team. So, and, and, and the purpose of that or, or, or the, the anatomy of a commodity team would be the key uh, internal customers, including uh, production, if you're in a manufacturing environment, uh, the logistics function, um, it could include um, suppliers and it could include um, the customers. And then the whole idea is to, to make decisions around the sourcing function and the, the entire procurement uh, the uh, function uh, and it this uh, it, it builds that synergy it it, it, it would make matters of uh, like the internal customer requirements understanding that um, the external customer requirements the quality function deployment will make the, the, the usage and the integration and the the the, the inputs to, to those uh, processes a lot um, easier to accomplish. As Ron said, you know, the, the activity cannot be done in, in, in silos. So again, um, that's a great start, start point, um, building that, that commodity team. Again, um, doing a, at least a quarterly survey on how well the procurement function is uh, performing relative to the, 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 the mandates and the requirements and the expectations of that commodity team. And we hold ourselves accountable. And another best practice uh, would be to 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 to, des to leverage what you call a, 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 a annual strategic procurement plan or a buying plan, right? To, to to really have the components of a effective blind buying, buying plan laid out, and of course they always underpin all of the activities that 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 we do as procurement and supply chain professionals is underpinned by custom, they're, they're underpinned by customer requirements, really understanding that. And from there, those requirements would feed, right, our forecast, uh, our market analysis, um, our savings targets, uh, how well we map those. And of course, one of the key components of, of an of a annual buying plan or a strategic uh, annual procurement plan is the the methods and 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 and, and the, the 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 approach and the processes or the methods in which we realize those activities. So this is a very very um, uh, important uh, tool to leverage and to understand and the, the anatomy of 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 of, of a, such a plan uh, and how we integrate it with the procurement function strategy is very 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 important. We have that laid out and we able to to um to present the the, the findings and the, the, the objectives to our senior um, leaders right uh, um, again some in many organizations procurement is, is, is an afterthought and we we, we we've been not included in, in key strategic uh, um, decisions and processes and this is one effective way of of, of, of closing that gap it will make us as procurement professionals more effective if we are aligned and we are part of those key strategic um, decisions because they're, they're, they're going to affect us, right? So uh, again, the commodity team and or commodity and product teams and the leverage of a strategic procurement plan uh, is very, very important. Uh, next slide. 
All right, very good. So I'm going to pick it up here for a few, just a couple of minutes here. And, you know, the devil's in the details. And one of the things I learned long ago is if we can't measure and show real results to our leadership, to the organizations we work in, and make a real impact on the customer experience, if we can't deliver the goods, you know, that's going to be a problem. And the SCORE framework, which stands for the Supply Chain Operations Reference Model, originally developed by the Supply Chain Council, now part of ASCM, Association for Supply Management, has developed this SCORE model. And there's 250, more than 250 different metrics if you go from level one all the way down through level three and beyond. And I can tell you right now, you're not going to measure and control 250 things. So the trick is, what are the right vital handful of balanced metrics that are both internally and externally focused that are going to be the best bellwethers, both leading and trailing indicators, that what we're doing is actually making a difference. So the score framework is quite helpful. And in core to the score, if you will, you've got externally facing, right? This is facing customers, responsiveness, reliability, agility, right? And then you have internally focused metrics and objectives, cost effectiveness, managing our assets, you got inventory, utilization, all these other sorts of things. What's kind of new here, and I wanted to emphasize this, this is kind of the emerging thing since the score model was originally developed, is the reality and the mandate on this increasingly getting smaller world, more interactive all the time, is we're all in it together. And what about environmental impact? And it's beginning to be legislated and litigated uh, very heavily on businesses, and I'm sure yours is going to be, you know, if you're not already involved and worried about sustainability in the future, it's going to come, right? So what's the ability of us to perform and do the least impact to the environment? So this is newer stuff beginning to make its way in here. So if we go back to the top here, we have the attributes of performance, operational definitions, and then the top level metrics, right? Speed relating, for example, to fulfillment cycle time. Perfect order fulfillment with respect to reliability of our performance. Our agility. This is, this is a, a, a difficult area, but what about our up, upside and downside adaptability as things change in the market? You know, if uh, the market shifts in the wrong direction and we are holding the bag with a bunch of stuff we can't sell or use, that's a real problem. Or if the market takes off, right, we're successful in really meeting customer requirements, we get a ton of demand. We can't leave all that money on the table and open the door for our competitors to come in and grab market share. So we've got to have the upside adaptability and flexibility as well. These are easy to talk about and hard to measure and hard to control, but there are things to think about. And we've got to boil out what are those key things we're really going to drive and really pay attention to going forward. So everything we talked about at the beginning about the customer requirements, internal, external stakeholder requirements, working down through QFD is the what and kind of a how, and then this brings us back to, all right, great, but how are we gonna measure it and make sure we're driving the correct behavior with our suppliers and internally with our organizations as well. So we're down to just uh, one more slide and we're gonna have our final polling question in a moment. But David, if you could uh, walk us out through this slide for a few minutes before we do the last polling question. Sure. So we, we mentioned a lot of things um, today and, uh, much of it may be new um, to, to, to most of us. So with that said, the ability to, to lead transform, transformation or to transform our procurement function and our sourcing processes to realize um, competitive advantage and to leverage many of the tools that, 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 that we put forth today, it required a degree of, of transformation. And uh, so Next Level Purchasing Association, we designed this model to, to enable uh, procurement function leaders to, to lead the way in, in such a transformation. And again, you know, everything that, that, that you've seen so far today is underpinned by it, 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 the, the, the critical point of reference are uh, those or is those customer requirements, really understanding them and that affects everything that we do. And we, we have to you know, step back and, and, and create a, 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 a vision around that. And, and, and that vision, a key underpinning of that vision would be um, our, our current state, right? As we mentioned, I see there's a significant uh, uh, appetite for 
um, business analysis or current business analysis, really understanding and assessing the current state. And once, once we, we come to that reality, then what? Then what? Then the next step is to create a vision around how well, uh, uh, how we would integrate and improve and meet uh, our customer requirements and we would improve our business processes to, to an internal procurement function processes and, and enable the other departments or functions in our organization to, to meet those requirements. And then we have to, 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 to reflect on our processes, our technology, the, the, the materials that we use to execute our work. And then it comes a fundamental question, a critical question is do we have the right people who are aligned to that vision? Very important assessment. And then if we have the right people who are aligned, do they have the right skill sets, right? Because when you get into matters of, of really having a, 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 a profound uh, um, annual buying plan and all of the elements, we looked at, at, at the, the 10 phase sourcing approach and we laid out 41 sub phases, right? So do we have, are there some skill gaps in there, right? And, and, and what are the, the strategies to close those gaps? And as mentioned before, Next Level Purchasing Association, we have the PASS program, which we're able to do the, those critical assessments to identify key, key gap areas um, that would enable us to, to, to close the gaps to meet our customer requirements and to, to, to ensure competitive advantage. And again, uh, it, you know, creating that culture around um, the elements that we spoke of that we mentioned before, creating that, that, that culture of, 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 uh, of appreciation and effective compensation that we're rewarding uh, our teams for superior performance. And of course, uh, number seven, you know, ensuring that we have the right and balanced metrics, you know, run, run, give and hold. Uh, there's a whole slide dedicated to that. Thank you, Ron, for, for doing a profound job on the explanation of, of, of the score framework and really understanding that, 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 that um, uh, we, we ensure the effective selection. As Ron said, you know, they, they, they're easy to talk about, but they're very difficult to deploy. So in terms of, matter of the, matters of deployment, part of making sure that we have the right people on board with the right skills, one of the key skills uh, in the procurement function or the modern procurement function is to be able to collaborate effectively and to, to, to engage the key stakeholders to, to leverage those commodity teams and really understand uh, what are our requirements uh, and, and of course to, to, to put forth and our expectations of those um, individuals as well, right? So um, outside of the the some of the, 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 the what do we call the hard skills, the key soft skills are, are very important and, and to be able to influence and to create that culture around transformation. And of course, um, ensuring that we, 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 we identify and understanding um, the, the, the risks that exist around our supply chains and, and, and procurement functions and, and our sourcing processes. Again, going back to that environmental scan and um, just to just to do a recap on, in, in that light to bring it in context, really understanding our procurement functions and our supply chains do not operate, as Ron mentioned, in a bubble. They operate in an environment and really understanding that landscape and that environment and really understanding what are the trends, what are the impacts of those trends on the organization, and then how well our procurement functions position to capitalize on, on positive trends and to mitigate uh, any type of um, negative uh, trend or any, any risk factor. So this is um, pretty much what the, the, the strategic procurement operations transformational model that's designed by Next Level Purchasing Association, um, again, um, designed in nine critical dimensions. This is what this transformation model is about. And that transformation is the wave of the future. You know, it's, it's, it's gonna, it's a key element and we have to understand uh, and, and develop those skill sets. All right now, then, good job, David. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
So we're going to get into our final polling question, and then uh, I've got a couple of things I'd like to share, and then we're going to get into the Q&A. Uh, pretty close to being done here. But what I'd like you to do now, there's these nine different defined areas that David had shared with us, and we're looking for some feedback is to, again, the multiple choice, you know, how many of these, of those nine, which of those do you think are most interesting that you probably would personally like to learn more about and begin to dig into and really wrap your, your head around a little better? I'll give you a moment to do that. But we are definitely looking for some feedback and then the high hitters here on this list of nine will probably spend some extra time on here in upcoming webinars. So I'm gonna give you a moment to focus on that and we'll see what we hear back from the audience. Amber, I'll let you make the call on how much longer to leave the poll open. Amber, you're muted. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Yes, I'm thinking <laughs> another 10 seconds. We have people that got a lot late start going on this, uh, and then we'll close it down. Okay, well. Take a little extra time if we need it. We're very, we're very interested in the feedback, and mm -hmm. I'm sure some of the audience are interested in what their peers think as well. Right, and I'm going to end it now. All right, see what we get. Interesting, very interesting. So uh, you can use the scroll bar and drag up and down to see all nine of the categories. So there's a little scroll bar on the side. So I'm just scanning this really quick. Far and away, David, we have 52% of the entire audience picking, you know, 52% of the responses really nailing on improved procurement processes, technology machines, and materials. That is very interesting. And one of the things that uh, I'll, I'll give you a little prelude for next for the March webinar, there were, uh, as part of the survey that NLPA did you know, to tee up the 2020 webinars, we asked for the procurement community to suggest to us what the key areas of interest are. So the next webinar, we're gonna change things up dramatically. It's gonna be a panel discussion. And we have four incredibly strong industry experts that are going to be in the next webinar. It's going to be a moderated discussion. And there's four areas that really came out. One was we have process, right? How do we run better procurement processes, the internal piece of procurement? The second one had to do with risk and sustainability. The third big component came up was logistical, right? Just really understanding is, you know, logistics is not a problem that's getting better. It's getting harder all the time. You think about trucking and no truck drivers anymore and aut autonomous vehicles and going on and on. So logistical issues is a big thing of mine. And the last one was technology, which gets right at this, right? Technology, machines, materials, industry 4.0. So in our next webinar, we're gonna, we're gonna have four panelists. We have David to cover process. We have Greg, who is the founder of the Supply Chain Risk Consortium, who's going to talk about supply chain risk and sustainability. And then, let's see now, we have Pavan. He's one of the leading industry experts out there in the research and industry 4.0. And we'll be sharing with us all the things that procur procurement pros need to be thinking about in the 2020 and beyond. We're thinking about technology, not only for ourselves, but driving that behavior and the use of those technologies into our supply side. Very, very important. And then we're going to have an expert to be determined to talk about logistical challenges and what are the things about logistical issues that procurement professionals need to be aware of. And we're going to nail that down and get that published here in the next week. So just a little heads up, that's where we're headed. So before we get into uh, uh, wrap up here, I guess we have one more polling question. I didn't have it in my notes, but let's take a moment for this one. Uh, this looks like which of these are the most interesting We'd like to know more about. So why don't we do a really quick one here, Amber? Uh, you can pick one or all three of these. And let's get a little feedback from the audience. No, I think this is the same one. Yeah, yes, it is. Oh, it is. the same one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. yes. I'm sorry. Then let's finish up here then. So we had improving materials was being, okay, so we're good. We're just going to go ahead and move on. And I'll get us into wrap up here in a second. And one of the things that uh, we, we're beginning to socialize is this year, uh, NLPA is bringing to market 
a, a value-add opportunity for organizations that are like looking at commercial off-the-shelf training is great. You know, we can have people sign up individually as in, individual contributors, as their own personal development plans to, to learn all these things. Of course, you're going to do that. But the reality is many organizations, you know, need to kind of have a different model, right? Just, you know, watching the e-learning is great. And I can take the test, I can get the certification, but what about the practical skills of actually doing it? So borrowing from the dumbing wheel of continuous improvement, PDCA cycle, we have this one of the learn it, do it model that uh, we can have customized training, taking the commercial off the shelf materials for your organization based on the past results or other assessment, determining what are the key areas that the organization needs to manage you can even set objectives. You know, here's the things we'd like to drive in terms of performance in the next quarter or the next six months. And let's have a professional come in and help us master using these skills by applying them and learning them at the same time. So you can think about it as, you know, very defined business problems, designing specific activities, actually implementing those, you know, boots on the ground, make it happen. Make sure we can measure, right? Go back to that score framework, for example. Let's pick those right metrics. Make sure we're driving the right kinds of results into the organization. And when it works, we institutionalize it, make it part of the future. And then if necessary, you go back and you rinse and repeat on a continuous virtuous cycle of continuous improvement. So we're very excited about this. And if you have interest in learning more about it, reach out and we'll be happy to explain more. So with that, we're in the wrap up and getting into Q&A. We, we had the opportunity today, and thank you for sticking with us, you know, introducing that 10-phased approach to world-class sourcing and that whole cycle of planning and staging it, and then getting through some detail, kind of dove down a little bit into how do you really develop and understand customer requirements, internal stakeholders, make sure we're driving the right things for the customer experience, and meeting the needs of the organization from a performance perspective in the future. And of course, with, your, with the help of your polling questions, it helped us begin to understand kind of the prioritization of your future learning. So thank you so much for participating and uh, sharing with us your thoughts in the polling questions. And I think you'll find next month's webinar pretty exciting. So with that, turn it over to Amber for any final Q&A. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, David. This was a very informative and interesting webinar. I know I very much enjoyed it. And uh, we do have a few minutes open um, for questions. So if you have any questions you would like to pose to either Ron or David, please send those in and I will um, leave it. But for now, we do not have any questions. So we'll leave it open for about a minute and see if any come in. Yeah, I wasn't expecting a ton of questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet that whoever shows up for next month is gonna be some tough questions because these experts are gonna share some pretty cool stuff cutting edge, what's really going out there, what are those best practices, what are the trends coming in those four areas that I mentioned. I think next month we're going to get a basket load of questions for our panelists, but uh, we're certainly open to entertain any questions you may have here today about any of that. Oh wow, awesome. Um, we're very much looking forward to next month as well. We did receive one, and do you have any case studies that we could use to have some points mentioned in the webinar? Short answer is yes. <laughs> Short answer is yes. So a little more specificity, maybe a follow-up email to David would be good. Sure. There's a, we covered a lot of ground in the webinar. So maybe if there's a bit of specificity, whether that case study would relate to using the quality to function deployment tool, was it related to how you capture the voice of customer data? You know, how do you build the matrix? So if you could share a little specificity, we'd be happy to, to share additional information. Great question. Absolutely. Okay, I think that's going to be it for today. I don't have anything else and no details came in for that one question. Okay. Um, so again, thank you both for your time. Uh, You're welcome. Looking forward to next month. And I hope everyone has a great afternoon and thanks for joining in. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you.